Globally, plastic pollution is a huge problem, but in the Western world, we're sheltered from its devastating impact. Where roadside collections are available, we can feel safe in the knowledge that everything we put in our recycling bin is given a second life. However, the reality is that only 9% of the plastic that's ever been made has actually been recycled. And a huge portion of the waste you're putting in your recycling bin is still being incinerated or sent to landfill or sent overseas where it becomes somebody else's problem. And somehow we're still counting that towards our recycling rates. However, these countries often don't have the required facilities to recycle these properly. So that plastic waste just ends up back in the environment. In other parts of the world where they don't have the same amount of money or the infrastructure to solve or even hide the issue, the problem is far more apparent. So we've come out to the Gambia on the western coast of Africa to work with a small bunch of passionate people who are determined to tackle this problem themselves and use the waste to create jobs to combat the ongoing unemployment problem. But before we tell you all about these wonderful folk, let's look a little bit more into the Gambia and how waste is currently managed. So the Gambia is Africa's smallest mainland country and they are super limited when it comes to their ability to recycle plastic. There are three legal landfill sites, however, due to limited resources, waste is often dumped illegally, buried or burned, which of course has a direct impact on people's health. And while burning your waste in the street may seem like a bit of an alien concept to those of us in more developed countries, there's simply no waste collections available in certain areas, so what's their alternative? Realistically, if you were left to deal with your own waste, what options would be available to you, especially if you have very little income? And it's not just people that suffer at the hands of pollution. The whole of the country is essentially one big river, so much of the waste that is left on the side of the road ends up polluting the River Gambia, damaging its fragile mangrove system and being washed out into the Atlantic Ocean. Fishing is also a major industry here, employing over 300,000 people, and many of the towns and villages rely on the fishing sector for their livelihoods. However, with such a large amount of boats out on the water, many of those nets end up lost in the ocean as well as washed up on the beaches. And speaking of livelihoods, the Gambia ranks at number 174 out of 193 countries on the Human Development Index, which is a global measure of a country's standard of living, access to knowledge and health, which puts it in the low development category. So what can be done to tackle these issues? Well, in the coastal town of Gunja, four individuals have come together to try and do their part to reduce the amount of plastic waste that is going into the environment, raise awareness on the issue and create job opportunities. This is Babaka, and along with three other founders, Rebecca, Aliou, and Bai, they have set up Precious Plastic Gambia, a company that takes plastic waste and turns it into brand new products that are made with the circular economy in mind. We set up Precious Plastic Gambia to tackle the issue of plastic waste problem in the country, simply because in the Gambia, many times people throw, dump or bury plastics, which actually end up in the landfill or in the water bodies affecting marine lives and also the, our environment in general. So we come together to create solutions instead of problem and also to tackle the issue of unemployment among young people and people with disability. So with a clear mission in mind, they took their plan to the National Environment Agency in the Gambia and were able to get a grant of around 20,000 euros to cover the purchase of the necessary machinery and training needed to make this happen. So that's when they came across our good friend Rory from Sustainable Design Studio, who you may remember from a bunch of our other videos, as he offers a range of machines and moulds that can turn plastic waste into brand new items. What's that? And that's where we came into the whole story. So Rory reached out to us to see if we'd be interested in coming out to the Gambia with him to to help with a bit of the training as well as document the whole process. And as video making and plastic recycling are two of our favorite things in the world, we of course gladly accepted the invitation. So here we are at their workspace. They received the machines prior to us getting here. So first on the list is to finish getting these set up so that we can crack on with the training. They've gone with three different machines to get their workshop going. Firstly, an injection molding machine that will enable them to make smaller, more intricate items. An extrusion machine that will let them make larger things like beams and bricks. And thirdly, a shredder, which means they can granulate the plastic that they collect and clean so that it's ready to be recycled. So having these types of machines really helps small businesses like this stay sustainable, not just in terms of recycling, but also just getting to a level of production to be a sustainable business, turning a profit. And you don't need the same level of investment as you would for a large scale recycling factory. As well as the machines, Rory set out all of the tools and moulds required so that they have a fully functioning plastic workshop ready to go in a single package. Well done, Rory. Thank you. You're doing a lot of work. <laughs> 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 right, 
Right, so after a busy morning of machine setup and maintenance, we've now got a workshop that's looking great. We are slowly getting used to the temperature out here because it's a little bit different to back in England, but that's all right, we will manage. So this afternoon, we're having a session on how to identify plastic because they're mainly looking at recycling PE and PP. And then after that, we've got the compulsory and super exciting health and safety session, which everyone is obviously pumped for. <laughs> and it's not a proper training session without Rory sharing the wisdom of some of his absolute favourite YouTubers. Look at his happy little face. And speaking of eternal wisdom, for any of you that might be interested in joining the Brotherhood over on Patreon, we'll pop a link down below. There's a bunch of perks like video hangouts and early access videos, so feel free to take a look if that tickles your fancy. Grammar car is now wearing the appropriate PPE. There's a lot of heat towards the nozzle. So now the team are all clued up on how to tell different types of plastic apart, as well as how to make sure they're staying safe when recycling. And all this excitement was proving to be a little bit too much for some, so we left it there for the day. Just a quick side note for anyone that is enjoying the video, if you could just do us one tiny little favor, and that is stick around to the end and check out the video that we link in the cards, it would be massively appreciated. Not only does it really help us out and keeps us making these videos, but it's also just an awesome video to watch. It's other people doing great things in the world, so we really recommend it. And if you could, amazing. If not, no problem. We love you either way. Hello. Hello. These are my new mates. Fist bump. And you? And you? Yeah. <laughs> Good work. Right, back to work. So it's day two, and today we're looking at plastic sources and waste streams. It's something that's often overlooked when setting up a plastic workshop because everyone tends to think that there's plastic waste everywhere, so that's just going to be the easy bit. But first, you've got to really think about how much plastic you're going to be able to recycle, as you don't want to spend all your time collecting and cleaning plastic and then having far too much to be able to recycle and not being able to turn a profit. Also, as they're going to focus on PE and PP, they've got to think about where they're going to have really reliable sources to be able to have a good, constant flow of that plastic coming in. So where we are now is called Bakute and it's the largest landfill site in all of Gambia and I think we need to get the drone up in the air for this one just to show you the sheer scale of this place. It is always pretty harrowing to come to landfill sites and see the sheer amount of plastic waste that we produce. We also visited a slightly smaller landfill site, which was still just as mind blowing. And it's crazy to think that there's places like this all over the planet. A big problem with landfills is actually space. When they start to run out, they periodically burn waste to reduce the volume, but in turn, they're just converting that land pollution into air pollution, which is just horrendous for the planet. And what's left are these huge scars of burnt waste that run through the landscape. And amongst these burn piles, you find animals scavenging, trying to pick out food and scraps where they can, but inevitably consuming plastic, and then these animals go on to be farmed and consumed by humans. Pickers are always found at these sites, taking out the waste that does have some value, so that it can be collected and sold, but as you can see, it doesn't really make much of a dent in the overall amount. And the awful thing is, if they don't burn it, it's just gonna be a mountain of rubbish that grows and grows. When there have been these mountains, there's been instances of pickers taking rubbish from the bottom and then it collapses on top of them. So you can absolutely see why they do burn them. It's just, it's pretty crazy to think that that mountain of waste that was there is now gone and has just been turned into gases that have released into the atmosphere. We then visited a company that employs people to collect plastic from the local area as well as landfills and then sort it into plastic types. This is usually exported to other countries that purchase the material in large amounts, but this is a good option for Babaka's team to utilise. From looking through the material that they collect, this would be far more suited to extrusion rather than injection moulding, as the plastic really varies in quality, some of which may have been degrading in the sun for a long time. With extrusion, you can get away with a lower quality material, so it's not a problem, but we'll need to find another source for injection moulding. So just for those that don't know, different types of plastic comes in a whole bunch of different grades. So you might get some PE or polyethylene in a grade that is really thick. So it's, when it melts, it's like bubble gum. Um, or you might get another grade of it that's really thin and it runs a bit more like cream. And that's the kind of grade that you want for injection molding. And a really good source of that grade of plastic, and it's something that we use all the time at home, is bottle tops. As there are so many plastic bottles here in the Gambia, we've suggested that the team do something similar to what we've done back home, and that is set up what we refer to as a bottle top challenge. To do this, we engage with local schools to set them a task of collecting as many bottle tops as they can, and then we'll give them a small prize at the end for the winning team, so something like sports equipment or treats. 
And that way you're engaging with kids and helping change those younger mindsets. But you're also getting a massive amount of the right type of plastic that you need. So that is the training all done for today. It has been a long and very warm day. I am gross and sweaty, as you can see. So we're gonna go off for a swim now and a nice chilled night. And then tomorrow we're gonna to get them started on making things with the machines. So the guys are currently doing a quick demo of all the different machines before getting everyone to have a go on every single machine. Babaka has already got a team of five people in place that he's going to be working with to actually produce all the products, but we always say it's really important for everyone in the business to have a go on the machines just so they fully understand the process because it's just really important no matter what role you're doing that you understand how everything's made. This is always the really cool bit to see as every time people make something themselves for the first time they always get super pumped and you can just feel the motivation and excitement in the room which is just absolutely awesome. Lastly, we're doing some work with the team to work out their pricing strategy, as well as come up with the best sales streams for their products so that they know where they can best sell them. As well as agriculture and fishing, the Gambia's other biggest industry is tourism. With the insanely good weather, lovely people and amazing beaches, it's no wonder that flocks of tourists come to the Gambia every single year. And not only that, they've got incredible wildlife here. With over 600 species of birds, I haven't actually gone anywhere yet without my trusty binoculars by my side. They've also got six species of primates, hippos, crocodiles and loads more. We were sure to build in one free day in our eight day trip and we spent as much of that day seeing as many of these animals as possible, which was just amazing. Right, so after that slightly nature loving tangent, we have figured that the tourism industry is definitely something for the team to take advantage of here for when it comes to selling their products. So while they have a whole bunch of different molds here, we have suggested that they focus on the following products. Firstly, turtle key rings. There is a local conservation centre that rescues and rehabilitates turtles, so key rings seemed like a perfect product that related really nicely to a good cause. The team would be collecting waste from the exact beach that the turtles nest on, which could then be turned into these key rings and sold to tourists visiting the centre, with part of the profits going back into supporting the centre. Next, we visited some markets in the main tourist hotspots and noticed that jewellery was being sold everywhere. So beads seemed like a perfect fit as this would mean that they could make things like bracelets, necklaces, earrings and prayer beads. This wasn't actually a mould that they purchased, but it seemed like such a good fit that Rory very sweetly decided to give it to the team as a parting gift, which they were super happy with. Thirdly, we recommended that they utilise the beams to make benches. With ecotourism being a big growth sector in the Gambia, these could be sold to many of the hotels to help tell the story of how people here are tackling plastic waste. In turn, the team could also offer to take the hotel's plastic waste, which could then be given a new life. Benches could also be sold to schools so that the kids can understand what could be done with the waste they're helping to collect. So after a very busy, a very warm, but a really fun few days of training, the team are all ready and raring to go for their recycling venture. But what are their plans for the future? Well, in the short term, once they've solidified their sales channels, they're looking to grow the team to provide jobs for as many locals as possible. Currently, there's a team of around 10 people, but they're hoping that that triples over the next year. They're also hoping to indirectly create as many jobs as possible, whether that's through increasing the demand for plastic collection and sorting, increasing profit margins for market sellers, and increasing the need for conservationists. Engaging with schools and their local community is also really high on their priority list as changing their perceptions on how plastic waste should really be used is going to be key in making a change in their country, especially with the younger generation. Looking further forward, they're also really keen to set up even more workspaces throughout the Gambia so that they can increase their ecological footprint and protect more of this wonderful country as well as provide more jobs for locals in other towns and villages. So after an incredible eight days, we are genuinely really sad to be leaving, but we are 
unbelievably confident that with such an awesome team in place that they're going to have every success. So we're going to be checking back in with the team as much as we can and hopefully one day we'll be coming back. Just before we left, they even had a little surprise in store for us as they'd organised for their village elders to come in and play some music to send us off as well as celebrate the beginning of their recycling adventure. They even spotted some of the recycled plastic beams we'd been making and were extremely excited to make these into some instruments for themselves. Overall, it was a massively eye-opening experience and really interesting to see a perspective from a completely different part of the world. And what's going on here is just one example of one tiny country when in fact this is the case all over the planet. So all we can hope is that more and more passionate activists like Babaka and the team follow suit. Because ultimately the potential is all there within the recycling sector. Much of the technology and skills exist and are readily available. The only thing that's missing is investment. But there are all of these bodies out there that have grants and funds available trying to figure out where to spend their money. So hopefully with more startups like this one here in the Gambia, more people are going to be able to focus on helping clean up this planet of ours and in a way that could support them and their local community. So as you may be aware, our channel is all about how we can all make a difference to this wonderful planet of ours through plastic waste. And as we mentioned earlier in the video, there are some other awesome people in this world doing amazing things for our planet. Planet Wild are a global community of individuals deeply passionate about the environment and giving back to nature. Every month they embark on different missions from cleaning up our oceans and the environment to bringing back endangered species. They document the whole thing and release a full video over on their YouTube channel so you can see the difference that they're making. In their latest video, they're showing how to connect the vast stretches of unused land between power lines into flourishing meadows of biodiversity where they can provide a sanctuary for native plants and endangered species. And all of this is made possible by wonderful people like you supporting them. If you become a member, you're not just standing on the sidelines watching things happen, you're an active participant in frontline rewilding projects. Through their app, you can see firsthand the positive impact your support is making. And that is exactly why we support them ourselves. Let's get in a bit of sun. Why not, eh? We're in Gambia, it's the last day. So join us in supporting Planet Wild and together we can make a real difference. The first 200 of our amazing subscribers will get one month's free membership using code BROTHERSMAKE. And if you could check out those videos on screen now, you can see firsthand the difference that they're making. Thank you so much for watching this video. A huge thank you to Precious Plastic Gambia for having us and a massive thank you to Rory for inviting us out on this huge, amazing adventure with him. See you on the next one.